backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio begins now. Hear the best in new music, artist interviews, stories from the road, and more. You are now backstage, and here's your host, Mothership. Hey, everybody. Rockfest Records just signed the band as Fire Falls out of Boise, Idaho to their label. Vocalist Chris Lindstrom is my guest today on Backstage with Mothership. I have Chris Lindstrom of As Fire Falls. How you doing? Hi, I'm doing good. How are you doing? Doing great. I saw on social media that you guys just got signed to Rockfest Records, so I had to find out more. How did that happen? Yeah, I don't know. Kind of a funny story, I guess. We just somehow got talking to uh joseph from seventh day slumber he's the main guy obviously for Rockfest records i don't know we we just somehow got in contact i think probably my dad gave me his phone number <laughs> and, <laughs> a hook up. Uh, yeah a little hookup my and uh i ended up just texting him i was like hey joe you know it's, uh, you don't know me but it's me <laughs> but uh no we had played shows with them like in the past like years and years ago we've played a couple of shows with uh seventh day slumber but you know, the relationship didn't start getting serious, you could say, until very recently in the past few months. I sent Joe some of our music, and I guess he liked it. <laughs> <laughs> well, we uh, hope so. We, yeah, we hope so. But uh, yeah, he ended up liking it, and I don't know, things just kind of went from there. That's awesome. Now, you're in Idaho. Yeah, we're from Boise, Idaho. Yep. I don't know what's in Boise, Idaho, except for you. We have a little bit of everything in in Idaho. There's uh, there's like desert. There's mountains. There's rivers. There's snow. There's heat. You know, we got we got pretty much everything. A little something for everyone. <laughs> I'm in Georgia. We've got a little bit of that too. We don't have a desert though. I don't think we got swamp. That's what we're missing. We're missing the swamp here. That's it. Okay. So you have you have the desert. We have the swamp. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so I'm assuming you don't have any gators. No gators, no. <laughs> I've heard that gators like uh, taste good. Is that true? I had gator tail, and it's okay. kind of a white meat. I've had it fried. The old adage, tastes like chicken. <laughs> yeah, that's what I've heard, too. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. I've always been curious, and I've wanted to try it. I don't know. I've all seen right. stuff on, on like YouTube and all that of like people yeah. cooking up gators, <laughs> and I'm like, that sounds so interesting. I'd love to try that sometime. It's a, a very lean meat. You come down to Georgia, we'll we'll hook you up with some some gator tail or something. <laughs> okay, deal. Tell me who is in the band. So the band consists of me and my younger brother Nick. Uh, he's the drummer and he's like the smart one. He does all like the mixing and the producing and all the computer stuff. <laughs> okay. So it's me, my younger brother, our guitarist Nick our other guitarist jake now you got two nicks yeah we got two nicks yep actually we used to have a bass player and his name was chris so it was two chrises <laughs> and two nicks and you can imagine how we got bullied for that all the time oh my gosh that's <laughs> crazy well yeah, it's nick a with a c years, and so. nick with a k right yeah exactly nick with a c nick with a k and then it was chris with a k which was me and then it was chris with a c so it was pretty funny, but yeah. Now, tell me a little bit about your timeline. I know y'all started around 2011. Yeah. So how old am I? I'm 27 now. We started playing music like in a band when I was like, I mean, like 14, 15, you know, like you get started really young and in the parents garage and all that. And me and my younger brother, who was like, nine or 10 at the time, wow. <laughs> we were playing in bands together, just doing our thing, you know, taking it as seriously as 14, 15 year olds can take it. You know what I mean? Oh yeah. Well, you're um, real serious when you're that old. You, you think you are, yeah, right? Exactly. Yep. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but anyways, we just kept, we just kept sticking with it and doing our thing. And we kind of ended up taking it more seriously around the time when I graduated high school, which was 2013, 2014 ish. Okay. Um, so my younger brother was still in high school, but we were getting like tour offers and we were we were going out on the road. And so we were like, Nick, you know, my younger brother, I was like, Nick, we're pulling you out of high school for a bit. Like we need to hit the road for like a couple of weeks. So my <laughs> that's what we did. And yeah. And so he would have to, you know, study, quote unquote, on the road. And then he would come back and, 
you know, not know what to do for high school. But <laughs> so, yeah, we had to pull him out of high school a couple of times uh, just to play some shows every once in a while. Was he able fine. to finish? He didn't mind at all. Yeah, was, he was able to finish high school. Yeah, he was good. I was just thinking about J.R. Barice. He was 15 when Brian Head Welch took him on the road. Now he plays with corn sometimes, so, you know, I guess it was okay, right? Yeah, oh, yeah. I, I've been following J.R. for a long time, too. Yeah, really? I, yeah, I've been following him on, like, Facebook and Instagram. Same with um, my other guitarist, you know. We, we've been just following him through his journey with, like, corn and everything. So it's cool to see him doing his thing, just hanging out with Brian and, and all the gang, you know. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Anyways, we all ended up graduating high school, my brother included. I graduated, like, four years in front of him. And then after that, we just started taking music like more seriously, playing more shows, um, taking opportunities as they come. You know, you got to just take certain opportunities and just kept writing music and doing our thing up until now, really. Um, took a little bit of time off during the pandemic just because it was tough with the with everything being locked down. There was no there was no real creativity to draw from because, you know, you weren't allowed to go and go out and do things. So it was tough. Some people thrived in it um, and other people just didn't. So we mostly just worked trying to make money, save money. Um, we were obviously still a band, just obviously couldn't play shows, that sort of thing. But now that all that is done and over, we're, we're back at it again. Um, I actually own a recording studio here in Boise, Idaho with my younger brother. We, we run it together, our main thing here. So it's cool to be able to still be in the music business. Now, you have had charting songs and a lot of singles. You've had some EPs out. Tell us a little bit about that. We released like our first EP, or I guess maybe not our first, but our our second? Yeah, it was the World in Grey stuff, which <laughs> we <laughs> none of us like any of our old music at all. And we think it's really cringy <laughs> just because we were so young. But I think that's kind of how everyone is, you know. Um, yeah. But anyways, our second, I guess our first official EP. Yeah, it charted on like the Billboard Christian Rock charts. Uh, I think we, we had one or two songs go up there. And then we had a couple of singles do the same thing, too. But yeah, we've had a few uh, Billboard charting songs in our short little career with songs that we didn't even think were really anything special. So <laughs> it was what was the one with cool the bear? What was the bear one? Oh yeah, Branson the bear. Branson the bear. Branson the bear. That was honestly kind of like a joke, like a meme song, honestly, and the name reflected it too. I don't know. It was just kind of silly. We we're like, what if we just named it this? Because we always have working titles, you know, for songs when we don't know what to call them, you know, just like project songs like Brands and the Bear. That was just a random name we put down to save the song as and it ended up just staying. <laughs> Very <Yeah>. creative. <laughs> but um, yeah, so we released that World in Grey long time ago. And then we did like some singles, I believe. And then we did the Never Needed You EP, which was six ish songs. And then, or like five or six, maybe. Uh, and then we released a few more singles. Yeah, and now we're just kind of here. <laughs> where did you feel like maybe you were hitting where you wanted to hit at, at the Never Needed You 2017? I would say those songs were good. Yeah, we liked those at the time. Um, I think that our singles after that were when we were really hitting our stride with things okay. like uh, Blame was a good one. Uh, I think that one actually charted, too. Um, Transcendence, I think, is still one of our favorite songs for sure. We really like that single. And then, um, what's the newest one called? Out of Line. We think that one's pretty good too. <laughs> so you're starting to get happy where you are. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So we kind of hit our stride there like a couple of years ago. We haven't released anything for uh, a couple of years, obviously, but we've been slowly writing more songs and then all of a sudden, you know, having the opportunity to sign with a cool label like this puts a little fire under you and we're writing a lot more and we're gonna have something going soon so are you gonna be working with somebody or can you say it we're not working with anyone in particular no it's it's just us right now we might think about asking to see if we can get like some producer to help a little bit but i mean for now we're just doing it all in-house and uh we're actually really excited because these songs are very, very good. These are definitely our best songs to date. 
listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Backstage with Mothership returns after this. Out Performance Shop is a proud supporter of Solid Rock Radio. They specialize in retail and wholesale of automotive, high-performance, racing, and off-road products. They also carry a variety of accessories from remote control cars to rock and roller multi-carts. On the web at outperformance.com. What kind of artists were your influences when you were younger and even now? Uh, we all have listened to different styles of music and different different artists all together, really. Like, I mean, I grew up with like Skillet and Red, obviously, like the, the metal stuff. Uh, my guitarist would tell you he used to listen to Disturbed a lot. Mm-hmm. Just bands like that, more like heavy, heavy metal. He was like down rock. with the sickness. He was down with the sickness for sure. You know what? We actually play <laughs> we play a game with our guitarist because he knows I think he knows every Disturbed song on guitar. <laughs> and so we actually did this recently where we quiz him, where we play like a fraction of a second of a Disturbed song. And he has to guess like what the song is based off like, you know, the fraction of a second of the song in the beginning. And he's like 90 percent right, <laughs> <laughs> like off of any Disturbed song, off of any album. He's he's a machine. <laughs> awesome. But you know, we we listen to all sorts of we listen to rap, we listen to rock, uh secular, non-secular, all sorts of stuff. So our influences we listen to like rock, hip hop, um EDM stuff. My brother likes the electronic stuff. Yeah, pretty much everything and we combine all that, I guess. But yeah, we're we're excited to be getting new music out pretty soon. We actually I don't know if we're like allowed to say, but we 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 haven't signed anything with the label pertaining to this. But we're gonna have we're gonna be done writing the album. We have like a full length album that we're doing our first one. Mm-hmm. And we're gonna be done writing it by the end of this year, and we're gonna be hoping for like an early next year release. Mm-hmm. Very nice. Well, we're looking forward to this. I had heard your name before, but maybe you were more regional. I don't know. Yeah, we we're definitely still regional. <laughs> we yeah. we've really only played shows like around the Pacific Northwest and like in the yeah. desert. Yeah, and in the desert. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we we played shows like New Mexico, Arizona, that way, and then you know, west yeah. from there. Yeah. So if you if you had one song that you wanted somebody to listen to, which one would it be? Oh man, it would be definitely like our entire new album, but that's not <laughs> out yet. So okay. for now. Uh, I would say listen to Out of Line and listen to Transcendence. Both okay. of those are really good. I will accept two. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I feel like those reflect us pretty well for the for the new stuff. Were you on Warp Tour? Yeah, we played uh in Warp Tour one. I forget what year it was. Maybe it was like 2015 or something like that. Um, but yeah, we played Warp Tour in Salt Lake City, I believe it was. That was super cool. That was a cool little opportunity that we had. We had no business being there, but it worked out and people liked us. So <laughs> it's, it's one of those like they let us in, guys. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> yep, pretty much. So we got to we had to run around and like bother all like the bigger bands. Like I think we went and they they I mean they don't remember, but we went to and hung out with like. Memphis Mayfire hung out with those guys and bothered them a little bit and just, you know, ran around and did our little networking. You know, you were a little I mean? team then, weren't you? Yeah, we were. Yeah. <laughs> Get away with it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, I went to one warp tour and I worked uh, Family Force Five's uh, merch booth. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Which was fun. It was hot as it could be. And the catering was delicious. Mm hmm. And, and then I got a monster tour of water that I still have on my shelf over here that I thought was cool. <laughs> Oh, yeah, the tour waters. Yep, I remember those. They would be like little cans that looks like Monster, but then if you look at it, it says it's water. Yep, that that was like genius marketing for Oh, Monster I know. Energy. Yeah. Brilliant. Like, but honestly, it's like, do you really believe that these artists up here are like chugging energy drinks while they're performing? Like, there's no way. <laughs> people, people be dropping, especially in that heat, they'd be dropping like flies. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, I would. I had a coffee one time before a show. It was really hot outside. We were playing in... We were playing somewhere in California, but it was really hot. And after our set, uh, I went back out to like the van 
and I was feeling like really dizzy and like sick and I ended up just like throwing up all this coffee and stuff. <laughs> it was probably a good thing. Yeah, what definitely was a good thing. Yeah. Get rid of it. <laughs> mm hmm. No, oh, yeah. Your body's like, uh, no. <laughs> yep. I'm definitely one of those people where if I feel like sick, like if I feel like I need to throw up, I'm just going to do it and get it over with. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. There's like no, no use being miserable trying to stop it. <laughs> exactly. Like my, my brother in law is like, I'll do everything I can not to throw up. I'm like, dude, I just throw up <laughs> and like 99% of the time, I feel so much better. <laughs> Are you actually doing any booking touring? Right now, we're not doing anything planned. We want to do something towards like the end of the year, maybe locally, because we don't play locally very often just because that's that's kind of one of the golden rules um, is you don't want to play your city very much, even though for for us, it's pretty easy. Like we could say, hey, we want to play a show here with like some other bands and they would go. Uh, OK, sure. You know, um, but it's best to just not play your city like maybe once or twice a year because you don't want like all of your friends and your local fans to just not come. Yeah. And you don't want to saturate so, your market there. Yeah. When you're like promoting a show, you're like, hey, everyone get out here, you know, and then all of your fans are like, well, we just saw you last week at such and such our venue. You know? <laughs> so we're trying not to play locally as much. And we've been pretty good about that. Um but we're probably going to do something later this year. But anyways, tour wise, we're probably thinking like early next year, maybe for like an album release or or something. Who knows? I don't, I don't know. <laughs> Remains like to be to seen. Something. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Well, when you're on the road, what's your favorite snack? Oh, man. On the road. Uh, I like the uh, those little candies called Haichu. Yeah. Those are super good. I love those. And then... Uh, my brother likes to eat uh, Ritz crackers, just plain Ritz crackers. Okay. That's so dry. <laughs> They're very dry, but he'll eat like sleeve after sleeve of Ritz. I'm like, you're insane. It's a lot of bread. It is. Or, yeah. or crumbs, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what a crummy snack. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right. What's y'all's favorite restaurant to stop in? Man, favorite restaurant? Jeez. I mean, Taco Bell is always like a staple. Ding, ding, right? ding, ding, ding. <laughs> yeah, Taco Bell is always a staple for on the road. McDonald's yeah. sometimes, but I don't know. McDonald's is pretty gross. I mean, Taco Bell's gross, too. What am I saying? <laughs> but <laughs> I don't know. On the we, level we of like, grossness. Yeah. When we're traveling to like cities we've never been to before or cities that we have been to before, we usually try and go um, check out like what's local. Like if there's like mom and pop like diners or yeah you know like a sandwich place or something because you can get you know you can get taco bell anywhere or mcdonald's mm -hmm. but you know this one city might have a super good sandwich and you're like i gotta take you guys here you know blah, blah blah i don't know so or like a really good local pizza place even so yeah. that's usually what we like to do what inspires you what inspires me personally yeah I just want to make like good music that people want to listen to. And that has like a decent message to it, I guess, or at least not like a negative message. You know what I mean? Cause there's a lot of negative music out there and I'd rather just make more positive, you know, even if the music is more like dark and heavy, you know, there can be a positive message behind it. I mean, some songs that I write, like I, I don't have a message behind it. I'm just like throwing words together that sound good. Maybe they'll have, like some somewhat of a theme but i don't know sometimes i like to leave it up to the uh listener to derive what they want to out of it you know what i mean yeah yeah i mean obviously i'll write some songs like okay this this song definitely means like this or it pertains to you know this part of life or blah 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 but others other songs i'm just like yeah i mean think of it what you want <laughs> Listening to Backstage with Mothership on Solid Rock Radio. Check us out on Facebook at I'm with Mothership. Are you writing because you're inspired or are you writing to inspire others? Definitely. I mean, I think both. Both make sense for me because I love it when people say like, oh, man, I really love this song. Like, you know, I play it in my car every day to work or, or you're like in my number one playlist or, or something like that. Or the song means so much. And obviously that's super cool to hear. And um, it's cool to see that passion uh, live too. When people like know your music and they've seen you or they've seen you before, 
or you know they're familiar with you whatever um i feel like that definitely helps a lot and there's definitely a different energy like live as opposed to sitting in a dark room with like a computer and just like writing music <laughs> it's like two totally different worlds i feel like like you're performing in one live and the other one you're sitting well for me i'm sitting alone with a computer you know what i mean <laughs> so i don't know i would say both though in different ways maybe in different ways yeah sometimes it's complicated like sometimes you just don't feel inspired you know like sometimes i just don't feel like listening to music like other people's music or mine or working on music and then other times i'm like researching you know music or i'm looking at different time signatures of like what i might want to try writing in or different you know re researching different cadences that people and different artists use for their lyrics or whatever um and then i'll just sit down and i'll just like write a bunch so it just depends on the day honestly <laughs> Okay. Melody or lyrics, which comes um, first? You know what? Uh, melody, I feel like, is more important for the initial listen, because that's like the hook that people listen for. Like if you hear some really cool like da 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 da, you know, whatever. Mm -hmm. That's what initially hooks people. And then they go back and listen like a second time and they're like, oh, the lyrics sound cool, too. Like, oh, the lyrics actually have meaning or. Or I like the words, you know, whatever. So I feel like melody, I don't know, melody is like the initial, but the lyrics are also very important. So <laughs> I'm going to say yeah. both again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I agree. I, I listen and I'm, I can't necessarily hear the lyrics yet. Right. Mm -hmm. But I know how the melody makes me feel. Totally. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest regret? Biggest regret? I mean, I always regret not spending enough time working on music or working on like my craft sort of I guess you could say um but maybe that's just me being like I could always do more right other than that geez I don't know how personal I want to get but <laughs> <laughs> okay we can leave it at I that mean, there's a lot <laughs> we all regret things right yeah that's but true music okay. wise I don't know we we could have done a lot more during like the pandemic and taking it a lot more seriously, uh, band-wise, music-wise, that sort of thing. But it was just tough because we were unable to draw from any inspiration or, you know, there wasn't really a light at the end of the tunnel for a, a long time music-wise because they were like, eh, you know, until further notice, you got to sit down and <laughs> shut up, basically. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I don't know. I feel like... Um, it's good for us, though. I feel like maybe the break was nice and it put things into perspective for us. Like, OK, mm -hmm. we, we all kind of sat down during that time and go, OK, like, is the is this music thing and is this band thing just going to be a a hobby for us? Um, mm -hmm. Are we just going to do it for fun? Which obviously we are doing it for fun. But you know what I mean? Do we want right. to take it really seriously? Do we want to make this a career if we can? Blah, blah, blah. And back then we were like, yeah. Like, let's just go for it. Let's just keep going and see what happens. And now that we're at this point, we're like, okay, yeah, we really need to keep going now. Like, we're Starting like, to get excited? Yeah, we're, we're definitely way more excited now and um, mm -hmm. very much more inspired with the music writing process, just getting ready for more shows. I mean, I think playing shows is the most fun part about being in a band. I mean, that's what everyone thinks about what, with being in a band, you know? You think about performing in front of hundreds or thousands of people, you know, that's like the dream. So, mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. Get, the, get all that out of your system. Yeah, exactly. And that's what you're called to do, right? So far, yeah, until until we feel like it's not time for us anymore. Yeah, we're just going to keep going. Faith based versus general market. Yeah, it's like secular market, and then there's like the Christian market. Like, that's what it is. And I feel like we've been good about being in both obviously we love doing like uh christian festivals i mean we've played at joshua fest and creation fest and you know other festivals around like the pacific northwest area and we love those those are super cool but we also love playing like warp tour and we love playing like other secular festivals and playing with other bands um as far as writing goes i've never actually really written <laughs> like christian ease songs you know what i mean right um i've always just thought that there can be good 
music without dark or divisive connotations to the lyrics. You know what I mean? Right. And I think it definitely matters where the lyrics come from, too. Like where you are in life, you write a song and you're really sad. You know, the lyrics are going <laughs> to reflect that. Yeah, exactly. Um, so I don't know. I've never written really like, quote unquote, Christian music or or Christian lyrics, even though, you know, I, I used to be I was a worship leader at our church for 12 years. And I, you know, I led worship like almost every Sunday. But the band was kind of like my outlet for positive message for, for people. You know what I mean? Does that make sense? Right. That makes sense. <laughs> So yeah. your your worldview is seen and felt and used in your lyrics and in your music, but it doesn't necessarily spell out step by step plan of salvation. Wow! Yeah, you kind of hit the nail on the head. Do you want to be in our band? That's great. Sure, let's go. <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. I'll have to write that down for other interviews or whatever. <laughs> yeah, no, I totally, I totally think you hit the nail on the head. Honestly, that that's great. There's a lot of arguing back and forth about whether or not there's uh, the message has to be very, very clear. But mm -hmm. there's also opportunity in telling parables as well. Yeah, totally. Oh, I totally agree with that. And like I said earlier, like sometimes for, for certain songs, I like um, to just let the listener derive what they want from the song or take whatever <laughs> meaning they want from it. Because, I mean, at the end of the day, like I'm not the one listening to it. Like I'm making this music for other people to listen to and they can listen to it how they want really you know what i yeah. mean whether you planned it that way or not they're still going to listen to it from their worldview yeah exactly and their totally. experience totally 100 percent. yeah i can't make you listen to it to our music from a certain perspective right and and no band or artist really can i mean if you want the the lyrics to come off a certain way obviously you can write the lyrics in that way but um yeah, yeah, exactly what you said. You can't make them listen to it from your perspective. And yeah. as far as people saying like, oh, you have to have a message to the song or there's got to be, you know, strict guidelines for being a Christian band or a non-Christian band, blah, blah, blah. It's like, I don't know. But I think people can kind of do what they want in that regard. <laughs> oh, yeah. I think musicians, they're called to different things. Yeah, I totally agree with that. Everyone comes from a different place in life, you know. And I've always said and, and thought that like, you really can't compare yourself to other people. Everyone's in a different spot in life. Even if you're the same age as someone, you know, you've got totally different backgrounds, I'm sure. Right. And if we interviewed Chris 10 years ago and 10 years from now, you're going to be different. I, I would hope so. Yeah, exactly. I'm <laughs> yeah, saying. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Let people have room to grow. Let people have room to let the Lord guide them. <laughs> yeah, 100 percent. Totally. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. So, Chris. What's mm -hmm. one thing you would do if you knew you wouldn't fail? Oh, uh, man. If I knew I wouldn't fail, I, I yeah. mean, I'd probably do like more of the stock market, to be honest. <laughs> I'd, I'd be done with the band. I'd just be full time stock market guy. <laughs> well, see, then you could fund your albums. Oh, yeah, that's true. OK, I'm back in the band. OK, good. All right, cool. <laughs> so you'd uh, do the stock market. You'd invest in your production company mm -hmm. and uh, you would... Uh, help other bands get started and leave a legacy, right? Oh, sure. Yeah, we'll go with that. <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> I got a plan for you, man. <laughs> okay, you're my new manager for oh, life. Okay, I'm in the band and I am your new manager. Yeah, man, that, this is a good interview for you. <laughs> <laughs> I know. It. I'm going places, baby. <laughs> right? <laughs> That's funny. Before we go, last words. We're writing our first full-length album right now and it's going to be out through um rock fest records and that's going to probably hopefully be out early next year we're writing it right now we're recording right now and i think it's going to be some of the best rock slash metal music that's out there honestly all right well i believe it thank you <laughs> let's do it cool all right well thanks for doing this with me i hope to see you on the road one day thanks again i really appreciate it wonderful good night cool. thank you Thank you for listening. Stay tuned for more great music and check out my blog page on the Solid Rock Radio website for my guests' social media links. If you've missed any of my past interviews, you can find them uploaded to podcast.solidrockradio.org. Have a wonderful week and let's be kind to one another.